Pope visited America and he inspired a lot of people, even in cynical Washington, D.C. For one, he inspired Speaker Boehner to wake up the next morning and announce his resignation. As I said last week, it must be hard for a decent man like Speaker Boehner to be the head of a new know-nothing party of increasingly extreme measures to cut health care for women and round up and deport millions of undocumented immigrants. It remains to, see, to be seen how Republicans in the House will conduct themselves without adult supervision, but the Speaker is going out on a high note. Having the Pope speak to America from the floor of the House of Representatives was a crowning achievement for the Speaker. And now that his job is no longer on the line, I hope he will see immigration reform as the jewel in that crown and act before he steps down. But we all know that is unlikely. The current hysteria on the campaign trail makes actions by these Republicans or any Republicans unlikely. Even though I still believe we have the votes, like we did for the last several years, to pass immigration reform in the House, I don't think the Speaker, even as a lame duck, will allow a vote. But the Pope's visit certainly inspired me to think about moral examples he sets. Look, the Holy Father simply reminded members of Congress about the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And he could not even complete his sentence before he got a standing ovation. If we had a daily reminder of the golden rule, we could cut through a lot of the bull in Congress and have a better country and a better world. And as the golden rule, I'm here to discuss. Treat your brother and your sister and your neighbor with compassion as you would like to be treated yourself. And in the case of health care and access to health care, it is not simply out of a sense of moral altruism, although that is part of it. Rather, it is out of the reality that treating our brothers and sisters and neighbors as we want to be treated when it comes to health care and access to health care and access to health insurance is in our own self-interest as well. That's why I'm introducing the Exchange Inclusion for a Healthy America Act of 2015, a bill to give complete access to the Affordable Care Act regardless of their immigration status. The Exchange Inclusion for a Healthy America will extend health care insurance access to millions of our neighbors and family members who live here, work here, raise families here, and will probably live here for the rest of their lives who lack legal immigration status. It gives them access to health care exchanges and Obamacare under the ordinary rules of residency in the states in which they live and makes them eligible for subsidies if and when they file taxes, just like the rest of us. It also subjects them to the individual mandate that requires individuals to have health insurance. The goal is to make integration and inclusion real for millions of families that are locked out under current law. Now, I remember correctly the President was standing right here in 2009 talking about his health care reform proposal would exclude undocumented immigrants and one of our colleagues on the other side of the aisle interrupted him by shouting you lie to the president of the United States of America we should all know was reelected comfortably in 2012 I do not expect that member of Congress to join me as a co-sponsor but in fact as we all know he was dead wrong about the Affordable Care Act in addition to death panels and a number of other fictions, the Republicans were wrong that undocumented immigrants were included in Obamacare. They just weren't. I am and have always been an advocate for a single-payer approach to universal health coverage, and I fought to include all the people who live in this country in the Affordable Care Act, but they were written up. As it stands right now, undocumented immigrants are not subject to the individual mandated and cannot buy into the health insurance exchanges, even if they use their own money. My legislation will change that. It, it says we stand for inclusion. It says we understand the principle that if you are here, if you're working and caring for your family and contributing to society, you should be healthy. Not only that, but your health and your protection from diseases, injuries, and preventable illnesses impacts my health care and the health care of my family. As a nation, we all benefit when we spread the risk, invite younger, healthier workers to join our exchanges, reduce the cost of com compensating hospitals for caring for the uninsured and reducing the number of uninsured who live and work here. Doing unto others as you would have them do unto you means moving forward with no restrictions on which brother and sister and neighbor we think of as eligible or deserving or is in fact considered my neighbor, my sister, and my brother. My party and the vast majority of the country understands that getting immigrants on the books and into the system and integrating them into today's American society should be the goal, just as we have done with every other group of immigrants throughout our history. And my legislation, the Exchange Inclusion for a Healthy America Act, is a step in that direction.